Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the index uh, demonstration here at PMTS 2017. Uh, today, Mark Saulmuller uh, from uh, the North American sales manager from Index <clears throat> is going to walk us through a demonstration with the Index G200 Turn Mill. This is an evolution of their very popular G200 uh, series, probably had about 2,500. Love it, just step right on me. They're very successful uh, G200 machine uh, in the past. This machine has uh, multi-axis, five axis, has Y, three turrets, and what I like about it is in the old days with screw machines, we wanted to drop the part complete. We didn't want to have to go off the machine. And as you can see, this is a complete part and a geometry, challenging geometry. So uh, Mark Saulmuller, take it away. OK. Thank you, Miles. Uh, welcome to the Index booth. Uh, as Miles mentioned, my name is Mark Saulmuller. I'm the North America Sales Manager for Index. Um, and we're here to kind of review our machine, the G200.2. As Miles mentioned, this, this machine is actually based on a design that we've sold in the past that uh, there's over 2,500 worldwide, a very popular machine. And basically what Index has done is we've kind of revamped the machine, uh, incorporating some newer technology and also kind of adding other things to it that, well, gee, I wish I had this or I wish I had that. So uh, it's given us even more flexibility than we've had in the past. So um, if the, uh, have the camera in the machine there a little bit. So we will open the door in a second here. Okay. The general design of the machine uh, basically, we have a tube-style main uh, bed, okay, so that gives us a lot of strength, rigidity, low and good thermal stability, and then based off of that, we go up in a horizontal fashion. It's not where we have a way on top of a way on top of a way. We basically have the one main Z-axis, and then we build up horizontally, and if you took the sheet metal off here, the upper turret is actually looks a lot like a horizontal machining center. We have a big sort of rectangular framework where that upper turret rides X, Y, Z, and B capability. What's also unique with our turret design is we use a quill technology for the um, Y axis movement. So again, it's not a way on top of a way. So the net result is we have a machine that's got a very small footprint, okay? And also because of that design, we have very, very short overhangs. So our cutting tool, it's very close to the spindles. We can get there very quick, number one. And number two, being close and compact, we have a lot of rigidity in the machine. And again, good thermal stability. So can you, uh... all right, we're just going to let this cycle through and uh, we'll open up the door a little bit more. So a couple of things that we also incorporate in the machine. Uh, the main and counter spindle, and that's an important point, is that it's a counter spindle, it's not a sub spindle. Our main spindle and our counter spindle have the same capacity, so you don't lose anything on the transfer. Whatever you can fit in the main, you can fit on the counter. These spindles are a, a very proven design utilized on our C series machines, which have been around for quite a while. It's an integral spindle motor. It's liquid cooled, so again, that liquid cooling helps with thermal stability and also gives us longer bearing life. The turret designs, and we'll zoom in on those, as we mentioned, the, one, the big difference between the old and the new machine is that we, number one, we have a longer Z-axis stroke. We can do up to 660 millimeters. We've also now incorporated a third turret. And the design on this machine allows us to use those three turrets in any position on the machine. I could actually have three turrets on the main spindle, three turrets on the counter, or I could split them up between the two. And depending on the workpiece, it even allows us to have the capability of four tools in the cut all at the same time. So tremendous, tremendous flexibility. Is, do we have cycle start or oh, cycle stop coming up?
So to kind of give you a close-up view of the machine, again, we have our main spindle. Typically, this is set up as a bar machine. We have 65 millimeter bar capacity, but you can do chucking applications. We have our, as I mentioned, our counter spindle on the other side. We have our upper turret, and that upper turret combines a 14 station VDI style turret. Okay, all of those 14 tools can be live tools. And I also combine that with a true milling spindle, which has the ability to go up to 7,200 RPMs. And it also has a six station ATC tool changer, which we'll show you that in a minute. So this also has B axis positioning. So instead of buying all those very expensive angle tool holders and trying to adjust and lock in angles, I just program the angle I need and then I can run an XYZ to make whatever part I need to make. We have our lower turret here, turret number two, again, 14 stations, VDI. And then a little bit difficult to see here, but you're certainly welcome to come up afterwards, would be the third turret, which also is a 14 station turret with VDI. In keeping with the theme of the show here, one of the things is driving down setup times, okay? Some nice features with this machine. Number one, I've got three times 14. You do the math, it gives you a lot of tooling capability. I also have the ability to put double holders on there because I have Y axis, so I can easily have more than 14 tools in each turret. The other thing we can do, and maybe if you could move the camera over this way, one of the very nice features too, we use VDI. I think everybody's probably, from anybody not familiar with VDI? Okay, VDI is basically, it's a shank system with a, with a gearing on it in a sense that's used to lock tools into position. Now VDI is very fast, with a couple turns of an Allen wrench you can pop it in and out. The problem is VDI on its own is not very accurate. So at Index we've incorporated something in the design of our turret and our tools to give you that accuracy. And what that is, is in the turret, and you can look at the model here, there's a, on each side, there's a W groove ground into the turret face. And our tools, in turn, have a matching W groove in it. So when we pull this in and out, okay, we have the fast VDI, but we have the accuracy of that unit. So uh, it's probably a little hard to see out here in the audience, but uh, if I've got the right, oops, this guy. So if anybody wants to come look at this in a little more detail later on, okay, I take the tool out. We actually have a, an indicator on here, okay? It was zeroed out. And when I lock this tool back into position now, I'm back to zero. So that tool is repeating, actually, typically we're down in about the two micron, two to four micron range repeatability, taking tools in and out. So especially if you have long boring bars, drills, et cetera, that's a really, really handy feature. So that's a way you can really save on setup time, being able to have the speed of the VDI, but also keep the accuracy that you'd like on the tool. So, um, another big feature on the machine, as you can see right here, just from an operator standpoint, many, many mill turns, because you have those ways piled up, you've got to reach way, way, way in the back, or you've got to have a six foot four person with long arms to get at the tooling. The ergonomics on the G200 are really nice. You can see, I'm not a real tall guy, but I can get at the tools very easily. On all three turrets, I can get to my chucks. We also utilize uh, quick change collet chucks on the machine, which basically you have a little pistol grip thing um, where you go in, you click it, you pull it out, and you put the next one in. So again, another opportunity to drive down your setup times. Good chip flow. You notice most of the surfaces here have angular way, uh, sheet metal covers. So again, as the coolant's splashing around in there, it's taking the chips down into the chip conveyor and outside the back of the machine. We also incorporate, you know, handling bar material, and again, as Miles mentioned, from raw material to finished part. 
part of that process is what do I do with the part when it's finished? Again, you may want to look at this afterwards, but we have a parts gripper. It's not just a pop-out basket we dump a part in. We actually have a programmable gripper, and that's the guideway up there. That gripper comes over. I can go grab the workpiece out of the counter spindle, take it, drop it, and then it gets conveyed out the back of the machine over here. So if you have delicate work pieces or aluminum or brass work pieces that you don't want damaged, that's a great way to keep them in good, uh, that they don't get damaged. The other part of that gripper, which is really nice, I also have the ability to bring that gripper over to the main spindle. So if I have to take a part out of the main spindle, I can do that. And I can also grab my bar remnant when the bar is finished. So I'm not just dumping the remnant into the chip conveyor and then having my chip conveyor jam up because I've got a chunk of uh, inch and a half material sitting in it. And that also comes out right here. So finished parts here, bar remnant here, all in one unit. So we kind of handle everything from start to finish. So, um, as I mentioned, we have a milling spindle here. Okay, that takes an HSK40 tool. And I have, if you could open the door here quick. Yeah, they don't trust me to push buttons. <laughs> so, I don't know if you can get the camera in there a little bit, but basically this is our ATC unit. That whole unit slides out, and then this turret will go up in the right position to grab the tool. It does have, and again, they've incorporated a lot of smart features. We actually have an air, air, blow, air blade system, I guess you call it. So as the tools go in and out of there, they're getting blown off so we don't get chips and everything to hang up the tool changer. And they even incorporate a drip tray so any coolant that still might be on the tool holders from being in the machine environment will just drain out harmlessly back into the chip tank. So it covers a lot of detail. Thank you. With the, some of the other things we can do with this design that's really nice, with the turret configuration we have, we can use these for a lot of different operations. We can obviously do short stubby parts, but with the third turret available, we have the ability to put a, a tail stock on, so we could do some longer shaft parts and have that just as a tail stock, while we still have two tool carriers available to work on the part. We also could incorporate a steady rest, a hydraulic steady rest that we could grip a part face and put a center in and then bring the tail stock in. So again, tremendous flexibility. And the other thing that we can do, which is a little unique with index, we also have the ability we can actually perform grinding operations in this machine. So if you had an application and you needed to hold some tight tolerances or a specific surface finish, we can actually do grinding applications, which is, is kind of unique of a machine of this style. Um, so some of the workpiece examples we have here, okay, just to give you an idea, obviously standard turning, milling capability, all right. We can also do things like we can skive, we can do gear hobbing, okay. The front of this part we actually have, it's a polygon that we actually mill in the front of the part, so you can do some pretty complex work here. It is not a full five axis, excuse me, it's not a full five axis contouring milling, but it is positioning, okay? We do have other machines that have that capability though. So this is kind of a nice compromise between a full blown big giant mill turn with big tool changers, you know, a little bit more, uh, you know, similar flexibility, but not quite as overblown maybe as those machines may be for other customers. Uh, tool holders. We basically make our own tool holders because we do have that W groove. One of the nice things though with the internet today, if you actually go to our website, there's a thing called the info shop. And if you're curious to see what's available, if you go to the info shop, we actually can call up whatever model machine like the G200 and you can actually look at all the tooling that is available, the various attachments that are available for the machine, okay? Also, the tooling that we have for this machine 
is interchangeable with a number of other, other models we have, like the C200 machine. So again, you could have different models of machines and have tooling that's interchangeable between them. We also, on the control side, we use the Siemens control. This is the latest generation Siemens, they're called the Solution Line. We have, I think it's a 17 inch, I think it's about a 17 inch color screen. Okay, so very nice to see, we can, it's a touch screen. Um, it also is um, uh, 4.0 ready. Okay, so you can store, and you can also store a lot of information in there. You could have uh, blueprints in there, you could have any kind of PDF file, you could have setup instructions, a whole bunch of things like that. The control also incorporates tool monitoring. So for a particular tool, I can set parameters like a high and a low. So it monitors the load. If the load gets too much because the tool is getting low, it'll give you an alarm. Or if the tool breaks and there's no load, it'll also give you an alarm. And obviously combined with a bar loader, uh, like our MBL, where you can have a bunch of bars there, that tool monitoring is really nice because you can just let the machine run you know, to a degree unattended. And it'll just keep loading bars and hopefully spitting out parts at, on the other side. So um, the only other thing I'll mention too is, again, for setup capability, to drive down our setup times, we also utilize presetting off the machine. You obviously don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on a presetter, okay? So our philosophy with all of the index equipment is we do not, pre we do not set tools in the machine, okay? We set them outside of the machine, and we have some of the things to show you what that looks like. So job A is running. You can be programming job B, and we have a thing called a virtual machine, which is a prove-out software, and it's serialized to your machine and you can actually run your program in that software and see how the machine is going to operate and do a lot of your optimization while the machine is running. You preset your tools, so when you're ready to go, you change your tools, dump in your new program, and you're ready to go again with a pretty quick change over time. So, we also have things like our, uh, I mentioned our main, our two spindles, our liquid cool, we also have liquid cooling in our electrical cabinet. So for the people that live down in uh, Texas and they get those 100 degree days in the shop, you'll be okay. The machine will keep running and won't alarm out. So um, other than that, I probably don't have a lot more to cover. I hope that kind of gave you a, a good feel on the machine, what its capabilities are. We have parts here. I do have, for instance, Brian is one of our applications guys. Thank you for your help, Brian. Um, they're available here if you have a specific part you'd like us to look at or discuss. Uh, we're more than ready to help you with that. And I guess I'll just, uh, are there any easy questions? <laughs> no? Is everybody still awake? Yes? So, all right. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the show.